For the past several weeks, we've been talking about having our best year ever. How many of you are believing God that 2016 can truly be your best year ever? Now, what's crazy about that is we're already almost two complete months into the year. Like, how does that happen, right? It's like time does not slow down. It keeps going, and it it seems like the older we get, that it goes by faster and faster. And so uh, we really have to acknowledge that and, and be mindful of that, that it just seems like life goes by so fast. And here we are already a couple of months in to uh, the new year. <clears throat> so, uh, but we started off 2016 with talking about something that I think is so critical. We talked about detoxing. I don't know if you remember that message, but uh, that we talked about getting rid of the common things in our lives to experience the special things of God in our lives. And then we followed up in our 21 days of prayer where Pastor Abel came and did an incredible job at speaking about prayer and the importance of prayer and how to pray and all those things. Uh, that, that message is not online. Uh, I wish it was, but uh, whenever we show a video clip, uh, unfortunately, we can't post that online because of copyright uh, issues. And so that message is not online. Uh, but you can always go to our website and catch any of the previous messages uh, from either a series or from uh, the beginning of the year, the detox one that was incredible. But uh, we've, we started out this year really great. And over the last couple of weeks, we start, we've been in this series of having our best year ever. And I truly believe that we can have our best year ever. And, and so we've been digging into that. If you missed any of the messages, I would encourage you to go back and take a look at that. We've been uh, discovering in this series many things that we need to focus on if we're going to have our best year ever. We talked about the necessity of serving, of how when we give our lives in service to others, there's such reward in that. And so we talked about the necessity of serving. We talked about the power of connecting to a life-giving small group. There's nothing like it. This past week, I was able to kick off two of my groups or be a part of two of the small groups that I personally participate in, and it was a, a joy. It was a reminder of what Uh, uh, of the importance of getting together and getting around others. And so it was such an encouragement there with that. Uh, But we also talked about getting, uh, getting, if we're going to have our best year ever, we need to physically uh, be able to uh, live at our best or optimal health. And so uh, that's another key area we talked about. But two weeks ago, we talked about the process of discipleship and how it's important for us to follow that process of discipleship. Here at Junction Community Church, we call that our growth track. And so we'll be having the second step in our growth track today, tonight at six o'clock. Pastor Abel will be teaching that class. It's called Essentials. I would encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, But you can sign up for that at the Information Center today if you're planning on coming. That way we can be prepared for you. But the growth track was so important. And then last week we talked about relationships because after all, it was Valentine's Day, right? And, uh, and so we talked about relationships, and, and that's one of those things that when we talk about relationships, there are so many factors, there are so many things for us to consider, there are so many uh, principles that will lead towards a better relationship in our lives, or a better marriage, or a better interaction with our children, or with our uh, family members, or coworkers. And but, but ultimately, this, this is true, is that The quality of our relationships, the quality of our relationships will determine whether or not we have our best year ever, right? And we know that. Like, life is good when everybody's happy at home, right? But life is not good when everybody's, there's discord and and, and it's just not not very good. So the reality is, is that it's important for us to make the most of our relationships. And we talked last week about a very key principle in forgiveness, operating and walking in forgiveness. And I'll tell you what, if you missed that message, you need to go back and watch that because I think that walking in forgiveness is a critical piece uh, to us being all that God wants us to be, to us experiencing all that God wants us to be. And I think the biggest thing about that message for me is that so many times we don't forgive because we have a wrong understanding of what forgiveness is. I'm not going to preach the message again, go back and watch it, uh, but uh, I'll tell you what, it was really good. And last week, our takeaway was simply this, the forgiven forgive, that because we've been forgiven in Christ, because we've experienced forgiveness, we also should extend forgiveness. And so the forgiven forgive was our takeaway from last week. I would encourage you to go back and watch that. Now, we'll be wrapping up our Best Year Ever series today with a look at another critical area of our lives. This, to me, is one of those critical areas. In fact, 
In the beginning of the year, most people set resolutions, right? They set New Year's resolutions. And, and what they do is they decide that I'm going to make some goals or a list of resolutions this year, and, and those are going to help me achieve my best year ever. Now, most recently, the top three uh, uh, New Year's resolutions were, number three, it was getting organized. How many of us can use a little more organization in our lives? Yes. How many know that the person or people we live with, they could be a little more organized in their lives? Amen. Uh, but for me, you know, uh, organization is important, and certainly I'd like to be more organized. I feel better when I'm organized. I just feel better about life. And when I'm not organized, it, it's a struggle. The struggle's real. But uh, organization was number three. Number two was, uh, was saving more and spending less. It was a financial goal, and uh, most people have that kind of goal. And then the number one, yeah, y'all can guess it, right? Uh, Weight loss, exercise, some kind of health goal. Everybody, New Year's resolution, right, is to uh, get healthier in 2016 and in 2017 and 2018, 2019. It's, I mean, it's the, it's the ongoing number one uh, New Year's resolution. But we talked about health a couple weeks ago. Today, I want to talk about the area of our finances. I want to talk a little bit about that. Because again, if we're going to have our best year ever, we're going to have to address this area of our personal finances. Now, let me start off by saying this, that if we're going to have our best year ever, it's going to be affected by how we deal with our money. But, I'm, but let me also give some disclaimers this morning. And, and the first one is, is that this morning, I'm not going to share with you all that there is to know about personal finances. There's just no way I can do that. In fact, I'm not even going to share all that I need, to, uh, all that I know. And, and, and not that I know everything, but I'm not going to share all that I know about personal finances. But I do want to share about one critical area that I think is so important. Because when it comes to uh, being faithful with the, the resources God has entrusted us with, we have to operate in what I would call generosity. We'd have to operate in the, in the principle of generosity. It's one of God's word, uh, uh, one of the principles of God's word. And so I want to talk about generosity for just a moment. But as we do, I'm going to ask Anthony if you can help me out. And uh, I've, got, I've brought something with me to help me today and, and, and uh, to help us kind of dig more into this idea but uh, how many of you know that, that financially, like, we, if we're going to have our best year ever, we really got to address that area, right? Because that, that's an area that we all, at times in our lives, we struggle with. Like, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good, but we all struggle, right? We all struggle in the area of, of our finances. Now, I've got something up here to help us today, and uh, it's a nice sack of corn. And you're thinking, what in the world does this have to do with, with, uh, with finances? Well, we'll get to that in a minute, all right? But it looks good, right? And now you're thinking about it. Now some of you, you got hungry. And now some of you are like, corn? I don't like corn. I don't, I don't. Whatever you're thinking. But here's the reality. Again, if we're going to have our best year ever, it's going to have to do with this area of finances. And we're going to have to consider one of the principles of God's word. So I want to, for the next few minutes, I want to encourage you towards generosity. I want to encourage you towards generosity because throughout scripture, we discover a theme of generosity. From the beginning, from Genesis all the way to the end and the book of Revelation, we discover a theme of generosity. In fact, I would say this, the greatest act in human history was the generosity of Christ when he went to the cross. And he really, as he went to that cross, he displayed generosity in, in a way that, that we can never really truly understand. Why? Because it, he wasn't generous based on if we did or if somebody did something or didn't do something. No, his generosity was completely selfless. He gave him, of himself and he gave everything that he had to give. He didn't just say, you know, I'll, I'll kind of... I'll go halfway to the cross, but then the people, they got to come halfway to me. Like, I, No, he went all the way expecting nothing in return, and he gave himself generously. And so we discover some of this principle more specifically in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And I want to look there. Now, the entire chapter, I want to encourage you, go back and read the entire chapter. But we're going to look at just a few verses. We're going to be looking at verses 6 through 11, but the entire chapter talks about generosity. So I want to just uh, take a few minutes to talk about generosity, okay? All right, so here we are. 
in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, starting in verse 6. And it says, remember this. Now, anytime we see a reminder in Scripture, we should probably heed its instruction. We should take note. We should uh, inscribe it on the tablet of our hearts, write it on our minds, our phones, our notebooks, whatever it is. Uh, but remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Now, here we are. All right, let's see how this works. Yep, it's corn. So, the way it works is that if we want to really ex- uh, to put this, uh, this whole verse, verse 6, into an object lesson today, we realize that it says if you want to, if you sow sparingly, you will reap what? Sparingly. But if you sow generously, you will also reap what? Generously. So here's the thing. If you and I wanted to receive a harvest in life in whatever area, uh, maybe our, with our finances, uh, then we'd need to just give a little bit, right? We need to like just so, just, just that, eh, you know what, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Well, nah, uh, I'm good with that, right? Just a little bit. But no, you know, the scripture clearly says that, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. So I think that we should be, you know, instead of reluctantly just kind of saying, well, I'll give a few, or I'll give this to, 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 you know, a little bit. No, we should be a little bit more generous than that. You know, we should, all right, let's see. how. There we go. That's looking more like it. Now, oh, we're making a mess here. But you know what? I love being generous. Like, right, doesn't that, isn't that even just more exciting? Like, man, I want to be generous. I don't want to just be like, uh, maybe. No, I want to be generous. And so whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. First principle we see here is about sowing and reaping. If we give a little, we can expect a, a little in return. If we give a lot, we can expect a lot in return. You following me so far this morning? Are you with me? Online, are you with me? All right, perfect. So, verse 7, reading on, it says, Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give. And so reality is uh, that, that the Apostle Paul is speaking to the church in Corinth, and he's really talking about the idea that they're to give an offering to the church in Jerusalem. And again, you should read the whole chapter. But he's saying, look, anybody who gives should give what they decided in their own heart. In other words, here's what I think about generosity and giving, is that it's a heart issue. It's about what we've determined in our heart. It's not about uh, showing others how much we've given or, or, or it's not about looking outwardly and say, look at me, look at how generous I've been. No, no, no. It's about the condition of our heart and saying, in my heart, I want to live a very generous life. And so each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give. And I love what it says next. So important. Love what it says next. It says, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Ah, very key. Not reluctantly or under compulsion. Have you ever done something reluctantly or under compulsion? You know, obligation, like, uh, and you're just like, I don't really want to do this, but I, I, uh, if, I, if I have to do it, if, okay, like, but I don't want to do it, you know? And we've all done that in life, right? Yeah, somebody ever asked you to go somewhere and you really didn't want to go, but you felt like you couldn't say no, so you said, sure. And then you go do it and you're thinking the whole time, like, why am I doing this? I don't want to be here. I, and you're just in this place where you're like, man, I'm, you do it out of obligation. And you, uh, it says out of compulsion. Um, it, it, another key thing it says here in, in the previous verse, verse 5, which I don't have up here, it, it's talking about this gift, again, that Paul's speaking about that they're going to, to get it. And it says, then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. Like when they give the gift, they want, as they prepare for the gift, they'll be able to do it generously. Again, generously, you know. Yeah, this is awesome. Rather than, um, uh, let's see, I have for the week, I've got, well, why well, didn't even make it in the bucket with those ones? Uh, there you go. The rest is going with me, you know. That's it. Those ones staying with me, right? 
So here it is. It's do we, do we want to give generously or under compulsion? And I don't know about you, but I don't ever want to give in my life to a person, to a church, to the to, to the church, whatever it is, I don't want to give out of compulsion. I don't want to give because I feel like I have to. I want to give because of the generosity of my heart. I want to give all that I am, all that I have. Are you still following me this morning? So it says, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, it's kind of like this. I often use these kind of terms, but, um, you know, whenever you ask your kid to do something, right? When you ask them to do something, there's a difference between and really, oh, yeah, no problem, Dad, right? Big difference, right? Like, it just makes you feel better when your kids, when you ask them to, you know, can you go put the dogs away or can you go feed the dogs or whatever it might be, you know, uh, for you, you know, can you go wash the car uh, and detail the car, you know, I don't know what you ask your kids to do, Uh, but whatever you ask them to do, isn't it just such a better response when they say, sure, Dad, as opposed to like, you know, and, and don't you love it? Like, let's go to a bedtime, like when you're getting ready for bed. Because you all know, ki- you're like little kids, when they're getting ready for bed, like everything's fine. They're watching their final cartoon for the night or whatever it is. They got their tablet. They're watching it. And, and they're like excited about life and everything's fine. And they got a smile on. And then you say, it's time for bed. Ah! What's wrong? My knee hurts. Well, 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 your knee wasn't hurting a minute ago. Like, well, but my knee. And then they start crying. And like, they make a big old deal out of it. I, I you know, and uh, I'm God. <laughs> I experience that with all, you know, all my kids, to be honest. Um, but the classic is always your first kid, right? You know, and it's like, you know, Rebecca, it's time for bed. And, uh, and all of a sudden, she's got that limp, you know, like. And then it's like, hey, Rebecca, can you go get that candy so you and I can share? Oh, sure. You know? Because then we're getting ready for bed. Oh, oh. You know? And it's like, and so if that's the idea. It's not under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. Sure. Like, he loves when we cheerfully give out of, the, out of the abundance of our hearts, out of the joy of our lives, that we say, God, I want to be that generous giver that just pours it on and just gives generously. So God loves a cheerful giver. And all the parents can identify with this. Amen? Amen. And so verse 8, it goes on, and God is able, I love this, because how many of us, first of all, we know that the capability and ability of God is far than we could ever imagine, far than we can ever ask. It says, and God is able to bless you abundantly. God is able to bless you abundantly So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Love it. First of all, that when we walk in this principle of sowing and reaping and when we give generously, not under compulsion, but when we give out of the generosity and cheerfulness of our heart, it says, and God is able to bless you abundantly. Like, let me just say this. And you can take this literally to the bank with you. That if you will walk in generosity in 2016, that God will bless you more and above and abundantly than you've ever asked or imagined. I, I just, I can guarantee it because I, I just know this because I've seen it in my own life. And so God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. That at all times. No matter what comes your way, you'll be able to uh, uh, walk in every good work as it is written. And it says this, as it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. They have freely. I love that word freely. Because freely is this idea of, you know, this, this mess I'm making up here. Freely is, I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to consider, man, you know what? We're really going to make a mess today. Okay, here it is. So if you were planting a garden, like sparingly would be like, all right, that's, but freely (laughs) would be like, whoa, you know, dude, that stuff travels. Freely would be like, yeah, freely. Hey, that one was even cooler because look, let me try that. Oh, yeah. Freely, you know, like freely. This is it. Okay, so 
They freely scatter their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. And here's the reality, is that when it comes to generosity, we should freely and generously give liberally, abundantly. Why? Because we know God will reward it. And then it says, then their righteousness endures forever. Their righteousness endures forever. And so, are you like, are we tracking so far this morning? This is like, as I'm hearing this to me, it's challenging me on my generosity. Verse 10, it says, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and what? And increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Let's go back to that last slide and read that one more time because it says here, it says, now he who supplies the seed to the sower First of all, here's the reality. God is our supply. All good things come from God. Every perfect gift, the Bible says, comes from above. Like, I truly acknowledge in my life that anything I have is not because of who I am. It's not because of my own creativity. It's not because of my own hard work. Now, I think God honors all those things. But ultimately, I have to realize that God is my source, and He has provided for what I have in life. And if if I don't understand that, then I miss it all. And so he is, and here's, what, here's the part of the challenge, is that in tough times, if it's up to me, guess what? It looks impossible. But in tough times, if I know that he's my supplier, guess what? It don't matter what the situation looks like in front of me. God will always come through. Amen? God will always come through. And so now he who supplies seed to the sower, he who the, he's the one who gives seed to the sower. He's the one that makes a way. He's the one that provides the way. And bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. And I just believe this is a principle, that as we walk in generosity, as we walk in generosity and give freely and, and liberally as we give out and we just give to others, that God will reward that. And he will not only supply, but he will increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Verse 11, you will be enriched, enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. I love that. I love that. You will be enriched in every way. So I think most people, when it comes to finances in the church, first of all, they get confused because their thought process is if I give to God money, He's going to give back to me a certain amount of money. And I just think, like, don't, like, it doesn't always work that way. Like, it's not, like, I'm not, it's not a, it's not the lotto, you know what I'm saying? It's not like, it's not, you know, uh, uh, blackjack, you know what I'm saying? It's not gambling. It's not like a genie in the bottle. It's not that. But I'm just, it's a principle that as we operate in generosity, it says you will be enriched in every way. So I think you'll be enriched financially. I think you'll be enriched emotionally, spiritually. I think you'll be enriched in so many areas. In fact, how many of you, you know this to be true, how many of you, when you've given a gift to somebody, you feel good about it on the inside? Let's be honest. Whatever the gift is. Like you give it, like some of you love Christmas because you get gifts. Others of you love Christmas because you give gifts. And you just love that. You like, for you, it's 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 a true joy when you give a gift to somebody. And, and so, there, there's something that happens on the inside of us when we give something away, right? It's just, it feels good. Like when we do something good for somebody else or we give away something, but you'll be enriched in every way. I think it, it transcends finances uh, when we're generous. It transcends all those areas. And, it, and in every way, it says, so that you can be generous on every occasion. I love that. No matter what my life comes, no matter what comes to my life, no matter what my day brings, no matter what, opportunities or challenges in front of me, I can be generous every day. I can choose to live a life of generosity every day, no matter what comes my way. I can truly walk in generosity so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Love that. Thanksgiving to God. That your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. In fact, One of the ways that we're generous as a church is that we give to missionaries and missions and church planting um, all over different parts of the world. And one of the areas that we give financially uh, as a church, every time you give a gift to the church, what we say is that gift, we're going to re-gift it. 
and we're going to give it to, uh, to missions and all around the world. One of those areas that we give to is what we call Urban Outreach Denver or City Life Church, and you don't want to miss next week because Isaac Olivares will be here, and he'll be preaching next week and telling us all of the good things that, uh, that, that God has been doing right in the heart of downtown inner city Denver and how they feed uh, the homeless every week and how every week we have a part of that. Like every week you have a part of that, that when you give and we give to that uh, church plant and when we give to that outreach endeavor, we're feeding the homeless in Denver. We don't even realize it, but we're doing that. And so it's resulting in thanksgiving to God. And man, one, I should have pulled this up. I should have been more creative, but I'm sure next week Isaac will do an incredible job as he shares the heart of Urban Outreach Denver with us. But I'll tell you what, this week there was a, a post that he posted on Twitter about one of the guys that he interacted with. And he just said, I want to thank God because you're my pastor. And every week he comes to eat a free dinner on Thursday nights. And really he doesn't go to church, but that's his church. And Isaac is his pastor. And we have a part of that. Anyhow, you don't want to miss next week. Just I'll finish with that. But our generosity, uh, as we give to others, as we give to missions efforts, uh, it results in thanksgiving to God right now. Let me just tell you another area that we're giving to. We are, we are right now, in fact, I'm going to do it today. We're going to set up a, a reoccurring gift to go to a church plant in Hawaii to elevate community church, elevate community church. And I'm excited about it because it's a brand new church plant right in the heart of downtown Honolulu, and God is going to bless that, that ministry. And my, uh, my sister, my younger sister and her husband, they're leading the church. They planted it. They had their first Sunday, last Sunday, right? Yeah, last Sunday was their first corporate g- gathering in a building and, uh, and so that was such an exciting thing to see where they got together with just a small group in a conference room. But I know God is going to bless that ministry. And what we're saying is as a church, as Junction Community Church, we're going to be with you guys. And we're going to help you do what God has asked you to do right in the heart of Honolulu, right? Amen. Isn't that exciting to be a part of things like that? To see God work and move through us? And so uh, going back to this verse, let me just read it one more time as we clo- uh, close out this portion of Scripture today. Let me go back one more. Uh, there we go. So now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for, the food, bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You'll be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Again, if we're going to have our best year ever, it's going to be because we walk in absolute generosity. So what I'm hoping that you're beginning to see a clear picture of today is that in your life, as you walk in generosity, God will bless you. God will bless you abundantly. He'll, 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 he's, he's going to take the gift you give and he's going to use it as a blessing to others. It's going to result in thanksgiving. In fact, if we weren't so generous as a church, I'm telling you, there are so many people who wouldn't be here today or watching online, but it's because of our generosity. It's because of your generosity that God is touching hearts and touching lives, and we get to play a part of that. People are thanking God today for the opportunity to hear his word, both here in this place and through and, and, and online, whether it's on the app or wherever it might be. They're watching, and, and they have the real opportunity to rejoice and be thankful because of your generosity. Man, that to me that's encouraging. To me, that's exciting. And so I hope you can see the blessing in generosity. I hope that you can see and discover that there is truly a blessing in generosity. If we're going to have our best year ever, I'm convinced it's going to be because we walk in absolute generosity. And I love the promise of God's word, the promise that if we sow sparingly, we'll reap sparingly. But if we So so generously, we will also reap generously. It's the promise of God's word. But we see another promise that we discover in Proverbs 11.25. And in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25, it says this, A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. A generous person prospers. I love that. A generous person prospers. Like, it's a principle You know, it's a principle like gravity, like what goes up must come down. You got it. What goes up must come down. A generous person will prosper. It just works. That's just the way it is. That when somebody is generous, that when somebody offers their generosity, 
It's just that they're going to prosper. I'm telling you, it's just one of those areas. And then I love this because it says, whoever refreshes others will also be refreshed. Whoever, whoever refreshes others will also be refreshed. And ultimately, we know that we will reap according to how we sow. And so let me ask you this question. Will you reap sparingly or will you reap generously in your life? How will you reap? Because I know God wants to bless us. In fact, remember, the scripture teach us, teaches us that God is our supply. And he provides us with seed. He's the one that gets us started. All, remember I said earlier, all this comes from God. Like he provides. He's the one that gives us. And whatever we have, whatever we get from him, we can make mu much of it or we can make little of it. Now, again, there's principles all over God's word that we can discover more about this. We're only going to just talk about, a, a, you know, talk about this today, but there's principles all over God's word. And ultimately, he's the one that provides seed. And I believe that the true increase, as we've read that scripture, the true increase doesn't come like if I say, okay, I've got a few seeds, I'm going I'm to hide them. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hoard them. I'm going to be stingy with them. Y'all met stingy people, right? Like, none of you are stingy in here, but you met stingy people, and everybody said, amen. Like, you're, none of you are sitting next to somebody who's stingy, right? Amen. Like, you know, about anything. Like, it could be money, it could be food, whatever. Like, but here's the reality, is that personally, I believe that the increase comes when we walk in generosity. That when we walk in generosity, when we say, you know what, I'm not going to just kind of go through life and, and just, you know, live my little life real comfortable and real cautious and real safe. And now I'm going to live generously. I'm going to cheerfully give and let God bless that. So uh, I believe that that's where the increase comes. That when we start to say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to give all that I can and see if God can outgive me. In fact, uh, I heard this when I was a real young man. I heard something. I heard, try to outgive God. Try to outgive God is what I heard. And I knew that in my life, if I was going to try to outgive God, that it would never happen. And let me just say this. 18 years later, I'm still trying to outgive God. And 18 years later, he still amazes me every day on his generosity in my life. I don't deserve it. It's not because I'm any better than any person. It's not because I, I deserve it more than anybody else. No, it's because I was, let me just put it this way, I was dumb enough to believe that if I lived my life in generosity, God would bless it. And I'll tell you what, he's blessed me far beyond my wildest dreams, far beyond than I, I could ever have imagined. When I look at my life, when I look at my wife, that right there, it starts right there. Like, just look at your wife, dude, you're blessed. Like, she's the better half and all that and a bag of chips. Like, yeah, she's it. And you're blessed. Like, you, you, she's and then I look at my daughters and I realize how blessed I am and how God has blessed us with great relationship and peace and all those things. And of course, things and, 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 and he's blessed us with things. But ultimately, it comes back to this. I've tried for the last 18 plus years to outgive God and I've discovered that I can't. That no matter how generous I am, I can't outgive God. This was a gift. I love it. Sam, thank you. Um, Michael, Thank you, because Michael made this and Sam made this. And it was a gift to me, and I love it. Because I like hunting, you know? Anybody like hunting? I like fishing. I, I did some fishing on Friday, and we almost got skunked, but we caught one good-sized fish. And, uh, but here's the thing. I, I love this. This is a gift to me. God has blessed me in so many ways. But what I realize is that if we're going to give sparingly, like... Oh, I'll just give a little. Well, then God is not going to bless us. But here's how I believe God wants to bless us. That's how I believe God wants to bless us. And yet here we are, and we're saying to ourselves, well, I don't know, maybe I'll just, you know, maybe, nah, I don't, nah, give it all. Don't be all apologetic about it. Give it all. And watch how God will pour out his blessings over your life. Anybody believing for God's blessings? <laughs> Telling you, 
I'm telling you that if we will give generously, God will move on our behalf. And so as we prepare to close today, I want to close with just a few, a couple of things, two more things, and then a takeaway for today. But the two things that I want to say is that if we're going to walk in the generosity of God, if we're going to see God pour out his absolute blessings over our lives, there are two areas, two practices is what I would call them, two practices that I would say that we need to walk in in our lives. Two practices, okay? Um, And I think there's a lot more, but let me just give you two, all right? You can write these down. The first one is when it comes to our generosity, I think that we should give to God first and to eternal purposes. God first and eternal purposes. There are two in in one. God first to his eternal purposes. Like, I think that's where we should give. Because, like, here's the reality. The stock markets, they go up and down. The housing markets, they go up and down. And I'm not saying don't invest. I think that's wise. You need to make investments. I I think that's very wise. But I want to make my most significant investment in giving to God and to his eternal purposes. So my wife and I have determined that at minimum, we're going to give 10% of our income away. And for the last 18 years plus years of my life, that has been a principle. Now, it's a principle of God's word. It's called the tithe or 10%. You can discover that in God's word. We're not talking about uh, that specifically today. But it's a principle that Mary and I have committed to, that in our lives we've said we are going to give a minimum of 10% of our income away. Now, what I've found is that as we've given not only 10%, but even more, we can't outgive God. He keeps showing up in ways that like, you're just like, how? Only God. That's how. Only God. And there's so many ways that it comes to pass. So many ways. So I think the first area is that you have to give to God and his eternal eternal purposes. Like we believe here at Junction Community Church in the generous tithing that we should give generously in our tithe. We believe that. Like we believe it. That's the first area. Second area is this is that so many times we want to be generous to people, but we feel like we have to be fair. Don't worry about being fair. Let me just put it out there. Don't be fair. In fact, don't be fair. Because so so many times we say in our lives, I'm not going to give because I, if I give to this person, or let's just make it a little bit easier. In our homes, I have three daughters. And when we go to the store, oftentimes we don't want to get them something because then we can say, well, then I can't get anything for your sisters and that won't be fair and like we, no so we just say no my thing is like shoot they're at home they ain't gonna know anyway hook it up girl what you want in fact I'd rather spend it all on you because I ain't got three to spend on so I'll just spend on one like do for one here's the principle okay here's the practice rather do for one what you wish you could do for all do for one go out Say, so, you know what, I can't, I, can't, I can't do for everybody, but I could do for one. I could do for one family. I could do for one person. Do for one what you wish you could do for all. And, uh, you know, it's going to come around because then, then the next couple of days you're going to go to the store and then the other girls are going to be with you and you're just going to bless them. But here's the reality. You know, two practices that I think go in line with this principle that we're talking about today. Number one, give to God and to his eternal purposes. And number two, you got to... Do for one what you wish you could do for everyone, what you wish you could do for all. Just do it. Sometimes we say, man, I I don't want to do that because I can't do it for everybody. And and Just do it. Be generous. Be generous. And so as a takeaway today, let me just leave you with this takeaway. Generosity leads to prosperity. Generosity leads to prosperity. You want to prosper in your life. You want to prosper, be generous. Be generous. And watch God's blessing in your life. It'll be so much, you won't know what to do with it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, God, for this morning. We thank you for this moment, God. We thank you for your word and for your truth. Ultimately, we can walk in generosity. But if we're going to walk in generosity... We know that it will lead to prosperity. And God, I thank you that you gave the most generous gift of all when you gave of your life on the cross to save us. You gave willingly and freely. 
I thank you for that. Now, if there's anybody watching online or here in this place today, and you say, you know what, I've never committed my life to Christ. I've never given my life to Christ. I want to give you that opportunity. So right where you're at, if that's you, you say, I want to accept Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Would you just raise your hand right where you're at and then put it right back down. God sees your hand. Anybody else, you say, that's me. Would you just lift your hand real high and put it right back down. Online, please let us know. And for everybody in this place, would you repeat this simple prayer with me? Would you say, Jesus, today, I give my life to you. You gave yours generously for me. Now teach me to honor and serve you for the rest of the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's just thank God for those that responded today.